Hey guys, Richard Smith out here at Lake McIntosh in LMS County. I'm here with Dalton. Dalton, I'm sorry. No, it's not we, are, we are out here just talking a little bit about the history of Lake McIntosh. Mm -hmm. um, we're, I remember passing over that bridge, Dalton, yes, and sir. looking down at one point and seeing nothing yes, sir. underneath. I yes, mean, sir. it was hollowed out, it was deep. Mm -hmm. It scared the daylights out of me. Yes, sir. I mean, it was really, really deep. There, yes. there's, you know how deep that is out there by any chance? Uh, roughly, uh, the, the deepest parts is around 50 feet. About 50, 50 feet? feet. Okay. Yes, sir. I remember a lot deeper than that, but oh, yeah, yes, I've done something with it. So uh, how long have you been here, Dalton? I've been here about four and a half going on five years. Cool, cool. Yes, sir. Um, you got any amazing stories you might want to share with your experience uh, out here? Amazing stories. Uh, really only good stories is uh, about going and getting broke down boats, honestly. <laughs> just having the good conversations with people and, you know, uh, just bringing them on back and seeing that, you know, uh, they're glad to be back in and ready to go back home. But that's about it. So you're their, you're their savior in a sense. There you go. Somewhat. Like Somewhat. That, yes, <laughs> cool. Um, Awesome. You have some monuments up here. I'm going to go take a look at it in just a minute about mm -hmm. Class Mill. Yes, sir. Uh, the Battle of Class Mill happened approximately in this area somewhere. Right, yes, okay. sir. Yes, but sir. this whole area right here used to be nothing more than a creek. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. I remember uh, the uh, the road that came through uh, over this way, mm -hmm. you know, that used to go all the way across to the other uh, other area. Mm -hmm. you know, now, of course, if you go to the end of that road, mm -hmm. well, I forgot the name of it now, but if you go to that road, it's, it dead ends into the water. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, it sounds like a great history. Uh, it must be fun and amazing to be out here working and, and having a great time and enjoying this beautiful scenery. It, it really is, um, especially, you know, waking up and coming out to the lake. It, it definitely is a good scenery. Yeah, and uh, meet, meeting all these new people that come out here and uh, like to try out bank fishing for the first time or putting a boat in for the first time. It's, cool. it's always a good fit. Cool, cool. Yes, well, we're uh, we're glad to have this as part of our community. Yes, Thank sir. you so much. Yes, sir. I appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Glad to have you out. Thank you. So we're out here at Lake McIntosh today. Uh, we're going to take a look at the monuments to talk about the Claps Mill battle here in just a second. Um, just wanted to show this in the background so you can see where it's at. If you notice right across the little lake there across the bridge is where the paddle boats are. You can come out here. There's a parking area back here. You can pull around to the back, park here. There's a playground over there for the kids. Great place to bring your family to get out and enjoy the sunshine. Sunshine. Yeah. So we're going to look over here at the monuments, and I'm going to show you guys what those are. I'm sorry. I'm by myself. I don't have a cameraman with me today. But these are the monuments, and we're going to talk a little bit about those in just a second. Okay, we're out here at the Clap Mill Monuments at Lake McIntosh in Burlington, North Carolina. We're going to talk a little bit about the Southern Campaign of Green and Cornwallis from February and March of 1781. Okay, now there are five battles or skirmishes that are listed on this plaque. Number one is the Piles Massacre, which happened around February the 24th, 1781. It's February the 4th. 1781. Then we have the Clap Mills uh, skirmish, which was March the 2nd, 1781. March the 2nd, 1781. Then we go to White's, Weitzel's Mill, which was March the 6th, in 1781. There's a listing for New Garden, which was March 15th, 1781. And then the Guilford Courthouse battle there was March 15th, 1781, around the same time. Where are these places on the map? Well, you have a map here that shows where Lake McIntosh is. Now remember, Lake McIntosh used to be nothing but a stream, a little river going through. So you can see how people sitting up around this area could set up in a river situation, not necessarily a lake. But we are currently, the Piles Massacre is back here off of the... Uh, the uh, Alamance uh, is on the other side of Highway 62, and um, we're going to go check that out sometime in the future. We are currently at the uh, location approximately for Class Mill Battle. Now, I say approximately because it's not exactly on this very spot. There is, is an area around us where the Class Mill Battle happened. Where exactly, I'm not sure. Then we have the uh, Weitzel Mill Battle, which is off of uh, North Carolina 61, which is way up here. This road right here going through the middle, I'm going to get a better view of this, is uh, I-40, I-85. Then you have uh, the New Garden Battle, which is up near US uh, 220 in Greensboro. And then the Guilford Courthouse, of course, is out here, way out here, some miles away. Um, 
Now, where is the Guilford College Courthouse? So, in, in, to give you an idea of the area that we're talking about, what I did was I looked up on my phone, did a little Google search thing on the maps. From where we are right now at this very spot, driving the speed limit all the way to the Guilford Courthouse battlefield site, it would take 33 minutes at speed limit or 25 miles distance to go up the roads. Now, I don't know if they had roads back in this time or not. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they weren't paved. Uh, and I'm sure there were roads around here that went from here to there. Uh, so I'm not sure how much of a distance they had to go. Obviously, they couldn't just jump in their uh, you know, Ferrari and take a ride to the Guilford Courthouse. Uh, it took quite a bit of time to go from here to there. And um, <clears throat> So everything takes time to, to go from one spot to the other, get everything set up. I just want to talk about a little bit about the distance that we're talking about here and what kind of ground they covered. So obviously when they went through um, these areas, back uh, through the woods and back into people's houses, they just walked on people's land. They, they, they knocked on doors, they said, hey, we're hungry, can you give us some food? Uh, you know, there were a lot of things that happened during that time where the British Army would go in and take stuff away from normal everyday people and say they needed to have it, can we have it, and they take it and whatever. Um, but anyway, that's a lot of distance between us and where the Guilford Courthouse uh, battleground is. Again, talking about the area, we are here at this red dot, uh, getting on I-40 and 85 and going all the way up here to where the battle site is for the Guilford Courthouse is quite a bit of distance. Now they probably did have that main road going through there more than likely, uh, I'm not sure, but who knows. And uh, it would be interesting to see when Highway 40 85 was built and the history of that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the history of Class Mill itself. Uh, this plaque I'm going to read to you, it says, The earliest industrial development in the area involved water power being converted into mechanical energy into the form of a mill. In 1763, Henry McCulloch was granted permission to build a mill on Beaver Creek, a tributary of the Alamance and Hall River systems. By 1768, the Clapp family had come into possession of the mill, which harnessed the water power to operate a grist mill, a sawmill, and to press flaxseed for oil. This mill was located near the crossroads of several major colonial roads. Near the strategic site, just south of Class Mill, the British Army in February of 1781 established a camp. The millstone served as a staging area for the, Brit for the British forces and the cedar woods to its north served to conceal them in a counter ambush. American forces with reserves in place on Great Alamance Creek moved forward across the present Pond Road in a planned ambush on the British. The two powers clashed on the high bluff overlooking Clapp's Mill on Beaver Creek. Mills like Clapp's Mill flourished along the streams of the Hall River system until the late 1800s when many were merged or ceased production. Many of these mills are the predecessors of the American modern textile industry in Alamance County. So that's a little bit of history about the Claps Mill. Over here we see a plaque talking about the German community. Let's talk about that just for a second. The German community. So the German community was very important back then. War between the French king, Louis the, uh, I guess that's the 14th, and his enemies brought devastation to southern Germany in the early 1700s. Opportunities to possess land in Penn's colony and in Virginia brought a German-speaking community to America in 1730s. Land speculation by the Earl of Cranville and Henry E. McCulloch attracted German settlers to the banks of the Hall River system in North Carolina. These hard-working immigrants established themselves as a distant, distinct community by the beginning of the American Revolution. Foundations had, the, uh, foundations had been laid for churches and schools and theirs was a vibrant economy. The German community was solidly behind the regulator movement's desire to end government corruption. In the, Ameri uh, 
In the American Revolution, community opinion was divided. Both armies occupied their lands and made demands upon their goods and services and threatened the continued existence of this Beaver Creek settlement. Many German colonists from the stinking quarter to Reedy Fork served with the American army. Colonel Otho, Othlo H. Williams wrote to General Nathaniel Green, We have a great many friends upon the Hall River. I hear of a great number of men in arms in almost every direction and wish to see them collected. So the German community was pretty, uh, pretty wide based in this area as well, something I didn't realize. So this, this plaque talks about events in the Southern Campaign in the closing year of the American Revolution. So December the 6th, 1780, General Green takes command of the Southern Army. January 17th, 1781, the Battle of Cowpens. February the 1st, 1781, the Battle of Cowan's Ford. February 3rd, 1781, the Battle, Battle of Shallow Ford. February the 9th and 10th, 1781, Green at Guilford Courthouse. February 9th and 11th, 1781, Cornwallis at Wachovia. The, the Moravan settlements. February 14th through the 15th, 1781, Green across the Dan ri crosses the Dan River. February 21st, Cornwallis established headquarters in Hillsboro and raises the British standard. February 22nd and 23rd, skirmishes at Hart's Mill near Hillsboro. February 24th, Piles Massacre. February 28th, <laughs> the British Army moves near Claps Mill. March the 1st, American light troops moved to the banks of the Alamance. March the 2nd, the Battle of Claps Mill. March the 3rd, British mistakenly attack a group of Tories en route to join the British Army. March 6th, the Battle of Weitzel's Mill on Reedy Fork. March 15th, the Battle of New Garden. March, 18, uh, March 15th again, the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. March 18th, Cornwallis departs for Wilmington by way of Snow Camp and Cross Creek uh, in Fayetteville. March 7th, Green departs for South Carolina. March 25th, Cornwallis leaves Washington for Virginia. And October 17th and 19th, Cornwallis surrenders at Yorktown, Virginia. So from February 6th, So let's talk about the results of what happened with the Battle of Clouds Mill, okay? On March the 2nd, 1781, Major General Nathaniel Green had pulled together various elements of his army into a united fighting force. By his planned attack on the British Army, he indicated his desire for a general action. It was the first time that General Green entered into an action with a force superior in numbers to the British Army. Approximately 5,000 men British and American troops were in place or in reserve for the Battle of Claps Mill. While the planned ambush was unsuccessful, it drew Lieutenant General Charles Lord Cornwallis up a longer road to Weitzel's Mill on March 6th and to Guilford Courthouse on March 15th. On March 18th, Cornwallis led his wearied and depleted troops towards Wilmington and his sources of resupply. Following the Battle of Claps Mill, General Green disbanded the horse rifle units in favor of light infantry and dragon or cavalry units. The elements of March the 2nd and March the 6th led to conflict between the militia and the command of the American Army. This fraction was fueled by the debate in Congress over the maintenance of, standing colonial arm, of the standing colonial army. Much later, this and subsequent misunderstanding resulted in uniform code of military justice. Very interesting. I challenge you, if you haven't had a chance to come out here and check out these monuments, come out here and see a little bit of a history that is Claps Mill and this area. It's, it, our area and our history is very important to us, and we should never forget it, and we should teach our children why we have what we have today. Thanks for listening, guys. We're going to head up to the Guilford Courthouse now uh, to do a little video up there. Hope you'll have a great day. All right, so I'm out here today at Guilford Courthouse Battleground. And I stopped to park. Uh, the park is still actually closed, but we can still walk around and ride bikes in it because of the uh, virus. But I want to talk about this plaque for a moment before we go on to the main statue. This is in memoriam of Lieutenant Colonel 
Hal, H-A-L, Dixon of Caswell County, North Carolina. Now again, that name Dixon of Caswell County. Third North Carolina Regiment, Continental Line. And it talks about other things. He says, this, uh, this em the embodiment of Calvary, the idol of his soldiers, three times wounded in battle from which he died July 17th, 1782. So this monument is, re is resurrected, I believe it was resurrected in 1895 for Colonel Hal Dixon. All right, let's go on and check out the rest of the park. Okay, we're out here today at, at Guilford, College, uh, Guilford County Battleground. And we're here at the monument for the Nathaniel Green, uh, the horse and uh, Nathaniel Green on top of the horse out here at the battleground. I want to talk a little bit about this. Uh, Nathaniel Green uh, was appointed uh, a major general in the uh, command of the Southern Army October 14, 1780. Uh, he was born in Rhode Island in August 17, 1742, and died in Georgia June 19, 1786. It's a beautiful monument and a thing of beauty for sure. Okay, we're back out here at Guilford Battleground. Uh, I'm here at this statue. It says, in memory of the North Carolina troops under Major Joseph Winston, who were fighting the Hessens and Tarleton's Cavalry near this spot after the Continental Line had retreated from the field of battle, March the 15th, 1781. Okay. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed our little tour of uh, the uh, class mill and uh, a small bit of Guilford County uh, Courthouse, uh, the battleground area here at Guilford County. And uh, we're going to do more in the future. This is just a little taste of what you're going to see down the road uh, on this video. So you guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.